It's been floated in the literature that maybe Enceladus might not be that old as opposed to some of the normal bodies of the solar system in 4.6 billion years and that it might not quite be that old. Do you know anything about that? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting idea in looking at how you might form the moons and the various systems. With Saturn, with its rings, there's one thought that perhaps what you do is you spin off, you sort of collect at the edge of Saturn's main rings these these moonlets, if you will, and you, maybe they sort of spin off one by one and maybe kind of come together and grow the moons over time. And so that's one thought or one idea for how you might get the moons in the Saturn system. Dating without having a lot of craters, usually craters are one way that we often will age date a surface by looking at how heavily cratered and doing crater counting and lots of things like that that we, we've done for our moon. But in Enceladus, there just aren't a lot of craters to count. So uh, you have to look perhaps at the, the neighboring moons around it. But even those, it's interesting, some of those may have been modified through interior processes as well. And, and for me, that's interesting because, you know, not only did Voyager fly by Jupiter and Saturn, but Uranus and Neptune as well. And we got a, a glimpse of the moons in those systems. But the Iranian system in particular is very interesting. You know, Miranda looking like it was torn apart and thrown back together. And there's some moons in that system, Ariel in particular, out from Miranda. You wonder if there might be ocean worlds in the Iranian system as well. And so uh, there's a chance to go back. A mission is in the very earliest thought stages to go back with an orbiter to Uranus and perhaps with a probe as well, maybe to send into Uranus to study an ice giant up close and study its moons and rings and, and the planet as well. That I'd love to go back to Uranus. I, I would too. I think that we, we, we don't spend enough time thinking about the ice giants. And it, yeah, they're hard to get to, but we did it with Voyager. And it's time to go back and take a closer look because there is some weird stuff going on. In particular, Triton with those geysers <laughs> that Voyager to, <laughs> I mean, what's going on there? You know, that's, that's such an alien thing, yet in some ways, weirdly familiar to Earth, just a different liquid. So there is really interesting stuff in the outer solar system and I think it's time to go back. Oh, I agree completely. I mean, Triton, we think, is a captured object. It's in a retrograde orbit, maybe a captured Kuiper Belt object. And it'd be very interesting just from that aspect of it to study Triton and compare it perhaps to Pluto. But so many interesting things to see. And in the case of Uranus and Neptune, we've just had one, one chance to go there. And I think I agree it's time to go back. And we almost didn't go. Do you remember, you know, the, in the very, very early days of Voyager, it was only, wasn't the Grand Tour quite yet. It was just Richard Nixon said, well, let's do two of them, <laughs> Jupiter and Saturn, but not, not the other two, which we ended up doing because it was obviously convenient and the right thing to do. But it almost didn't happen. We could still be living in a time where we hadn't even seen a close-up picture of Neptune. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Although I, I would say that even though the initial mission was four years duration, just Jupiter and Saturn, uh, the navigators, the people putting together the orbits very carefully planned that to make the opportunity be available to go on to Uranus and Neptune. Another part of that story that's very interesting is that the Voyager 1 flyby of Titan in particular had to be successful because we could have retargeted Voyager 2 to follow a very similar trajectory to Voyager 1 and also fly close to Titan had something gone wrong with the Voyager 1 flyby, but fortunately everything went as planned and that gave us then the chance to say, okay, now we're going to use Saturn to slingshot us on out to Uranus and Neptune. That was a very unique juxtaposition of the solar system to be able to do all of those gravity assists and hit those planets like that. But we did sacrifice Voyager 1. What was the circumstances? And I, I, I know the answer, obviously, Titan, but what, what was the reason to say, OK, we're Voyager 1 needs to go here and not go to Neptune or Uranus, but Voyager 2, we will. What was the circumstances of that? Yeah, I think you're, you're right. It, the decision was that Titan was a very high priority. Also, we didn't know, you know, we'd never sent something that far away to last quite that long. And so we were saying, let's get Titan. Let's at Saturn. We know we, the mission can last that long. Let's get Titan. But just sort of having in our back pocket Voyager 2 then to send out to Uranus and Neptune. And 